sacrilege or sensible. Those are really the two sides of the fence that people tend to occupy when it comes to sports car manufacturers turning their hands to SUVs. I've long been of the opinion that if you need to make a lucrative automotive Swiss army knife in order to underpin the more traditional side of your business then, well, so be it. And with that, let me present the Aston Martin DBX. As SUVs go, I rather like the look of it from the front, although not so much from the back. However, it's the inside of this car that I think will really appeal to potential customers. So that's where I thought I'd start my chat with Andrew Haslam, the DBX's Vehicle Line Director. Thank you so much for joining me in DBX to talk around it. We thought we'd start inside the car because, well, this is probably the most important interior for an Aston Martin ever, I should think, isn't it really? Yeah, you're right, and we, we, we started the project back in 2015, and one of the most important parts of DBX has to be that it, it qualifies as an SUV, uh, and the interior is fundamental to that because it's a new area for us where compromise isn't accepted, and therefore we've absolutely maximised every bit of space we can get for the interior, and, and whether it's legroom in the front and rear, which is class leading with boot space, we've got class leading boot space as well, or the amount of storage we have, the glove box, the door bins, under the centre console, an incredible amount of space. Uh, and so we, we spent a huge amount of time making sure when you get in the car, it, you just feel completely at home. And so your driving position, for example, it's got a nice sports feel to it. Your you feel quite low, don't you? Yeah, you still feel you've got this high dash here, it feels recognisably like like an Aston Martin, it, it, sort of still, despite the fact we're obviously higher exactly. up overall. And, that, and that's the balance we wanted. It's an SUV, so everybody who buys an SUV wants this feeling of elevation. They want to see over the cars in front of them and have a great visibility around the car. But equally, it's an Aston Martin, so we wanted to make sure people felt like they were sitting in the car rather than sitting on the car, which many, uh, many more utilitarian SUVs do. You just feel like you're not part of it. You're just, you're just being driven along on top of it. But absolutely, we wanted that sports car feel. And that feeling of space as well, this is you know, the first time I've sat in it, but, and I had a quick sit in the back as well. Um, I'm obviously, I'm six foot five um, and I left the seat. This is actually more legroom than I would need to um, drive it. But with the seat in this position, there's tons of legroom in the back and this, panoramic roof is standard is that right yes yeah standard fit so that gives you this sort of you know it's like it's not quite sitting in a conservatory but it feels really light and airy because the seats are in the back they're not those sort of podium seats you'd find in something like i don't know um uh discovery or something yeah, like that yeah. where you tend to sit sort of slightly over the um the passengers in the front that you sit still nice and down in but but yeah it's not claustrophobic at all is it no we've we've actually struck a brilliant balance between the R&D team and the design team to make sure we've got a car that is, we think, beautiful. And um, but equally, it's it's got this amount of space. So you can imagine we've we've got a, a not a overly coupe esque roof line, but it's a very sweeping roof line, which mm. then puts pressure on the rear occupant for headroom. And and again, we've with great pains, you know, some real hidden gems in this car, like the roof blind itself. Actually, you. you you've, frankly can't even get your finger between the roof blind and the glass because we've just eked out every last few millimetre of space to make sure when you're sat in the back it is as comfortable as the front you've got as much headroom leg room and it's just a really nice place to be yeah and um, these seats as well um, I was reading earlier they're sort of derived from DB11 is that right yeah absolutely and, uh, you know what what became very apparent was with over 100 years of history of making sports cars what makes a very good sports car actually starts to make an incredible SUV, whether it's low centre of gravity or use of very compact components like the seats, where actually because it's used in the sports cars, it's very shallow in height and it's also very shallow in depth. So with the height, we've elevated the seat, which makes a huge amount of foot space in the rear. Mm -hmm. So you can put your feet right under the seat in front. Yeah. And, and with the shallowness, it gives you a huge amount of knee clearance. Yeah. So, so you just, you know, that sports car philosophy of make it light, make it small as possible actually works really well for creating a great SUV. Absolutely. Um, let's talk about some of the material because it is obviously beautifully trimmed as you'd expect for an Aston Martin. We've got leather in here. Um, something we've got the, so we've got speakers, I can see one speaker there, but the rest of them all covered by leather, which gives it quite a nice sort of, quite a good simple feel in here, isn't it? 
Yeah, one of the design philosophies is very much around reducing clutter and, and it's as much about what you do see and, and what we deliberately stop you from seeing. And so the, the speaker grills were absolutely reducing sort of visual clutter and just making the car feel nicer and a more relaxing place to sit. And interestingly, actually, the, the speaker in the center here has got a, an air vent that sits next to it. So the air comes out through the perforation in the leather to, so to gently like, diffuse the air into the cabin. So it looks like one big speaker, but that's actually do exactly, two different functions. functions. Exactly yeah, that, yeah, good, exactly that. Good. The 14 speakers are part of a new 800 watt sound system developed with Harman Samsung. Most of the tech is recognisable from Mercedes, but it's a generation on from what you will find in other Astons, with a 10.25 inch TFT screen in the middle and a 12.3 inch screen for the dash. There is also a 360 degree camera system to aid parking, and more whimsically there is a 64 colour dual zone ambient lighting system. Anyway, back to more traditional things like leather and wool. Obviously being an Aston Martin you can take our full uh, natural grain leather, we've got the Alcantara materials that you've come to expect, but then we've introduced some great new materials with DBX. We've got this veneer here which is called a flax composite which is a, a more natural uh, composite material, which you can so have So it's like here. a natural carbon fibre. Exactly, yeah, exactly that. Not necessarily not the natural, structural you know properties, I mean? but it's a nice, it's a nice alternative. Um, and then we've got this incredible wool fabric, which is um, sufficient wool quantity to be branded as a, as a, as a natural wool. Because it gets, which, the, it gets the wool mark. Yeah, it gets the wool it? mark, exactly. <laughs> and, it, and it sits in the lower cabin, and, and again, it brings a, a wonderful softness to the feel of the interior. Yeah. That's fantastic. Um, let's talk a bit about the drivetrain. Um, well, I'm actually going to be controlling what's under, under yes. your right foot yeah. and that sort of thing. We've got the Tabacharge V8 um, that we've seen in Vantage before, but slightly changed from, yes, it's from a, that? Yes, it's a slightly higher tech engine than the Vantage engine. So it brings with it some new technology like uh, cylinder deactivation, for example, and it delivers a greater power output. So it's 550 PS, 700 newton meters of torque. So that is mated to a nine speed transmission. Okay. So first time we've, we've had a nine speed gearbox in an Aston Martin. Mm -hmm. And actually that pairing's wonderful for this car because it allows you to travel in a very tranquil, calm way if you want to on the motorway. It, you know, it's incredibly low revs when you're doing 70 mile an hour and, and effortless overtaking when you want to. Equally, you can, you can work the gearbox and work the rev range and you get a hugely rewarding sports car all of a sudden. And then in terms of the diffs, presumably you've got centre rear diffs. Yes, for... yeah. Then behind the gearbox, we've got the active transfer case, which is a, an amazing bit of technology. And it lends itself really well to being an Aston Martin SUV technology because it allows us to have almost 50-50 torque distribution front to rear, but when we wanted in a more sporting mode, we can go 100% rear wheel drive. And presumably helping that is the, you've got the 48 volts anti-roll system, which we've, you know, is, is now de rigueur really for this sort of car, but, yes. but presumably helps it uh, if you want this to behave like a sports car. Yeah, no, exactly. Got, all, you've got to have it really. You? All of these systems work brilliantly well together because behind the transfer case, we've then got an e-diff. So, so with the car, we're, la we're able to move the torque fore aft and we're able to move the torque left to right on the rear axle. So again, I, I spoke about making sports cars and how actually it lends itself really well to an SUV. Being able to move the torque around is, is brilliant for an SUV for grip, but obviously it's brilliant for a sports car as well because you, you, you get that driving character. We've created our own bespoke suspension system with the sole purpose of being a DBX. So it's, it's uncompromised. Double wishbones at the front, multi-link at the rear, yes. and three chamber? Air suspension. Yeah, triple right. chamber air suspension, and you also mentioned the anti-roll control, the electronic anti-roll control, and we have adaptive dampers. So each of those bits of technology sounds a bit confusing actually, but but if you imagine the air springs, triple chamber air spring, that allows us to do um, different spring rates. So we can adjust the comfort level of the spring rate, and we can also adjust the ride height of the car. So we can go up uh, 45 millimeters in multi-terrain mode, and we can drop down 50 millimeters for easy ingress, uh, egress. With the anti-roll control system, it, it's essentially a, a split in the middle of the anti-roll bar, and we've got a 1400 Newton meter uh, system that prevents body roll. 
and, and 1400 newton meters put it in context is, is about 50 percent more than some of our competitors have so for every g of cornering we can maintain less than half a degree of body roll some of our competitors may be 1200 front 900 rear which which means they're less precise in how they control the body and, and and maybe at times we notice some of their cars don't control their body roll as well as as well as we want to yeah. so you combine those technologies of electronic anti-roll control triple chamber air suspension and a bespoke suspension geometry and, and you get a car that drives like a sports car when you want it equally you know we're in a nice calm cabin Again, on the motorway, it rides incredibly smoothly when you want it to. And then through the touch of the, the mode switches, you can transform that character. Because we've got different modes here, obviously, compared to, um, say, Advantage or whatever, we've yes. got terrain, terrain modes. It, it, exactly. And, and with DBX, what, we, what we're what we very conscious of is we, we maybe bring a slightly less technology-savvy or technology-interested customer. And so we've got all this incredible technology on the car and we want to make sure people can use it and it's accessible. So with the sports cars you're able to change the engine and gearbox with one button and you're able to change the suspension setting with another and the slip control systems with another button. With DBX you simply move up and down the modes and, and it puts the car into the best um, positions possible to, to get the most out of the car. Should we go outside and have a look at the design and some of the aero and stuff like that? Sounds good. Cool. Whilst we extract ourselves from the car, here are a few more hard facts about the DBX. It has a 0-60 mile an hour time of 4.3 seconds and a top speed of 181 miles an hour. More unconventionally for an Aston, it has a curb weight of 2,245 kilos, a wading depth of 500 millimeters and can tow up to 2,700 kilos. You'll also be able to spec your DBX with a number of packages, such as the Pet Pack, which comes with a portable washer, which might be good for mountain bikes too, or the Snow Pack, which supplies you with boot warmers for those cold January trips to the mountains. Anyway, back to sunny Spain. It's strange for me sort of walking up to it because it looks almost uh, like the size of a sort of, I suppose, more Porsche Macan sort of size, but obviously it's Cayenne actual size which is I suppose comes down to some of the sculptural elements of it. Yeah it's, it's a mix actually of sculpture and base proportion and when we first set out on the project we wanted to make sure the car looked like an Aston Martin and we weighed up the opportunity of using another manufacturer's platform or creating our own and, and very early on we realised there would be huge benefits in creating our own platform for design reasons so we you get a unique silhouette from the side. We've, we have what we describe as a premium, uh, premium proportion, which is really the, the occupant sort of foot through to the front wheel and, and getting some of that distance in. That, that gives the car a more luxurious appearance. But equally, we wanted some of our sports car character, like the very shallow bonnet on top of the front wheel, for example, where most SUVs are really quite a high stack of metal. With DBX, we've achieved an incredibly shallow uh, painted area that sits above that, that um, front wheel as you look across the car. And then equally, it's got a really long wheelbase DBX, which gives it the benefit on the interior of having a huge amount of space. That leg room in the, in the back and stuff like that. Absolutely. But on the outside, it gives it a very sleek sporting appearance. And, and it's that proportion of the bonnet to the overall length to the height that, that makes it look like a smaller SUV. Yeah. It's an, it's an interesting car to walk around because it does change from all the angles sort of from, from our heights sort of up here. In fact, if you sort of get down, it changes again in terms of the way it looks and stuff like that. One thing I couldn't help notice, that has to be bigger. That, that wing badge has got to be bigger than he usually Yes, do. it absolutely is because it's the biggest grill we've put on an Aston Martin. And when you have a big grill, everything else needs to sit in proportion around it. So the whole car is clearly bigger than one of the sports cars. So it, it's got a big grill, but then the badge needed to be in proportion to the front grill. So a slightly larger, but still has and enameled uh, jewellery piece made in made in the UK. Yeah, absolutely. And just for context, so we're on 22-inch wheels on this. Are they, are they standard? Yes, 22-inch wheels are standard. So this this car has the the standard uh, style wheel, and then we have a ribbon option wheel, which is also a 22-inch wheel. Absolutely. And we're 285s and 325s on the back. That's right. We've got a we've got a definite rear bias on tire width to help with that with that dynamic character we yeah. want you know we've got huge amounts of torque we can put to the rear axle so the 
you can change the, the character of the car and, and the tyre width rear to front helps us with the dynamic character that we want. And do you have different tyre options, presumably, given, given the range of things this can be and it's going to presumably be in different climates and stuff all over absolutely, the world? Absolutely, yeah. You, you want to go into? Absolutely. European markets, we've got a summer tyre as standard, an amazing Pirelli P0 tyre and we have then a winter option and in North America, snow belt type areas, we've got a, an all-terrain tyre, which is, which is good all year round. Absolutely. Um, pick up on some of the design things, I suppose, this down here, this, which is the, the DRL, uh, which is actually an, an aerodynamic part, is that right? Yes, yeah, we, we've taken great pains to make sure we use all of the uh, features of the car functionally. So the, those, act, those daylight running lamps, as you say, they've got a, a vent that goes all the way through into the front wheel arch, and then it exhausts behind the fender panel and, and takes the air along the side of the car, so it just helps to create this air curtain along the side of the car to, to reduce overall drag on the car. And then on the, you know, you can see here on the engine, we, we take the air in at the front, we exhaust it out the, out the vents on the back and at the back of the bonnet. And then when we look over the whole car, we've got an, a, an incredibly neat trick on the rear of the car, which again, it, it looks quite simple, but actually it's simple because we took so long to create the system. So the air travels along the roof and then the rear wing actually drives air down the rear screen, which makes sure that rear screen self clears of water. So actually the rear screen always stays clean. So it, it's got that purpose, but it's also driving it over the rear spoiler on the, on the rear of the deck lid to, to activate the spoiler to, to reduce drag. Because otherwise, I mean, it, given where it is, it looks, looks very cool and it looks like the flick up from, from Vantage and that sort of thing. But presumably it wouldn't, it wouldn't work if you simply had the higher spoiler there because there'd be no airflow. Exactly, over, it so. wouldn't get there, which is where the, 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 the removal of the, I mean, clay as it was at the time with Miles <laughs> and the team, they, they sculpted out this incredible sort of hole in the spoiler to drive the air down and work really close with our aerodynamics guys to make sure it does that, um, that, that uh, performance well. Yeah, absolutely, and then down to the back and uh, obviously got the, the two exhausts um, at the back as well. Is, is there a sports exhaust option for the car? Yes, yeah, so the car is a, is a standard exhaust system, which, which sounds incredible. It, we again have taken great pain with the MVH guys to make sure this car sounds like an Aston Martin sports car. And it's a balance of um, the full frequency range and really Aston Martin sound character has a bit of a bias towards mid frequency. So the V8 naturally is quite a low frequency sounding engine and with the exhaust tuning and shape We've, we've increased that mid frequency to give it more of an Aston sound character. But then you can have a sports exhaust, which, you know, as a, as a driver just sounds incredible. They both sound incredible, but one is just a, a louder and more uh, sporty version. And you've got the gas particulate filters on. Yes, on exactly. Uh, again, another really neat bit of technology where it, it's meeting the emissions requirements, but we've designed it in such a way that it doesn't suppress the sound quality of the car. I'm excited to drive it. I'm intrigued by it. What is, what is an Aston Martin SUV going to drive like? So hopefully we'll find out fairly soon. For something that is such a departure from the norm for Aston Martin, it feels like the company has done a remarkably good job. At £158,000 or $189,900, the DBX is certainly at the luxury end of the SUV market. But I think the interior lives up to that. The final piece of the jigsaw is, of course, how it feels on the move. But if it drives as well as claimed, then perhaps it won't be branded as either sacrilege or sensible, but simply seen as an Aston Martin. That would surely be the ultimate accolade. <laughs>